Greetings all, this is Harry Nick back on FFG's X-Wing page because we had another reveal article today. Now, if you watched my last video, you know we also had a bunch of spoilers from some of the non-reveal article related content, including everything on this ship, the Resistance Bomber. Yes, this is Turn the Tide of Battle, a preview of the Resistance Bomber expansion pack for X-Wing. And looks really cool. We have yet another ship from the third era of Star Wars. And interestingly, we actually have a ship that cares about 3rd Euro ship, which is actually new design space for the game of X-Wing. So without further ado, let's take a look through what we have here. Okay, so here's the spread we had in the original announcement article. Let's go through these pilots one by one. Now in this article, we actually only had everything but the lowest pilot skill guy revealed. But in the aforementioned spoilers, we did have him revealed. He is the Crimson Squadron pilot, cost 25 points, and the raw frame of the ship is it has two primary attack, fires 360, one agility, nine hull, and three shield. Action is focus and target lock, and the upgrade slots is system, bomb bomb, and tech. Cool, so this is interesting. This guy sits one point above the Warden Squadron pilot, the lowest, the lowest cost K-Wing we can get into the game. So I guess when we're looking at this, we really do have to compare it to the K-Wing. I mean, there's obvious comparisons. One agility, two red dice, fires 360. A lot of health. Um, admittedly more health, but amongst everything else, it is very, very similar. Most notable difference is it does not have the slam action, and it is a big ship with a bit more health. Obviously, we have to look at this and go, okay, it doesn't have slam, it doesn't have crew, it doesn't have turrets, which is a powerful thing that the K-Wing boasts. So is that roughly the same squad point cost buy-in going to make it competitive enough? Does it justify sitting actually a whole point above the K-Wing? And just looking at this article, that's what we really have to decide. All right, the first unique pilot we have is Crimson Specialist. Cost a total of 27 points, pilot skill four, no APT. In fact, none of these guys have APTs. It's another one of these APT-less ships like the K-Wing or the Ghost. When placing a bomb, you dropped after revealing your manoeuvre dial, you may place the bomb token anywhere in play. Ooh, that sounds good. Touching your ship. Okay, not so good. Um, okay, so I've, and there's another card I've been looking at all day thinking, what? <laughs> um, I don't really know of any sort of massive tangible benefit from placing a bomb. Uh, I mean, anywhere in front of you, you always risk it going off in your face. I get that, but you could put it on to one side of the ship and kind of block ships as they're trying to fly through asteroids. It means you can set up your base one turn so you can place it right between asteroids and hamper the direction your opponent can fly. I do feel like this is very situational, but I will admit this is really interesting and crazy design space. And I always like that because at the end of the day, new and interesting design space is something we can't reject outright. We have to actually play around with it. I don't know whether dropping a bomb touching your base anywhere is going to be impactful, but I know for sure I definitely can't say it's not. And the fact that this is a big base ship as well obviously gives you a bit more space. There's physically a larger perimeter around that base to put the bomb on, and that feels pretty good. It is limited specifically to bombs that you must drop when you reveal your maneuver dial. Um, it can't take genius, obviously. Um, even if he could, it, it does say you have to drop the bomb before anyway. It, it wouldn't get around those rules. And that limits it a bit, but I, I guess it is a platform for the potential triple proton bomb if you want to go down that way. It is a platform from the bomblet generator, there's no doubt about that. And uh, yeah, these factors could be really powerful. So yeah, in the comments, guys, what do you think of this guy? Um, this is a big unknown for me, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Now the next one's another interesting one. Um, this is Cobalt Leader. And this guy actually wasn't revealed in the article. Again, this was spoiled separately. Pilot skill six costs 28 points, no APT again. When attacking, if the defender is at range one of a bomb token, it rolls one fewer die. So this is very interesting. My first thought was, oh, this works really well with the trajectory simulator. You can throw bombs forward and then your opponent's near bombs but the trajectory simulator only works with bombs that detonate at the end of the activation phase, meaning they won't be there when the opponent is going to attack, so that doesn't actually work. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I think there is some interesting design space, perhaps around this guy and Captain Nim, because Captain Nim could fly out in front and genius a bomb out further out in the battlefield, and then he can hold a bomb in place if he so wants to. There's definitely some 
Miranda with the slam action can go in hard and drop a bomb out further out in the battlefield with experimental interface. That seems really strong. I don't think this guy relying on his own bombs alone is going to make him powerful enough. But at the same time, he does have a 360 arc, so he can wait for your opponent to get behind you. I do like a more efficient build, though. Personally, I feel like if we can get the bombs out forward and have this guy slow rolling behind all of your ships, that makes a lot more sense. But there's a lot of cool stuff. Again, 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 guys, this is new design space, and that's something I love that FFG do. Um, having a downside to flying near bombs is something that we've basically never seen before. In fact, there's no downside to flying near bombs apart from ones that detonate, but this is giving you a downside to flying near bombs that don't detonate after activation. This is giving you a downside to flying near bombs that detonate when you touch them, and that is completely new territory for design. And once again, guys, um, suggestions in the comments. I want to hear what you think about this because this is really cool, and it actually gives you good reasons to take bombs that you may not have thought of before. Again, it adds more relevance to things like proxy mines and cluster mines, stuff that can really clog up the battlefield, and that's really cool. Um, I almost wish I could take this on the Scum Faction with uh, Scum Nim because that's his jam. He wants to clog up the battlefield, but even Rebel Nim, I feel like can play around with this and have a lot of fun. And that's really the question looking at these unique pilots. Do, do they slot in to the Rebel Bomb List? Do they replace either Miranda or Captain Nim? Do they go alongside Miranda or Captain Nim? Or are they just flat out worse than either of them? Um, that's something to think about because ultimately if they're not, then they just won't get flown, unfortunately. Anyway, before we discuss that any further, let's talk about Crimson Leader, the next guy. Pilot skill 7, cost 29 points. No EPT. When attacking, if the defender is inside your firing arc, cool, we got some firing arc matter stuff, you may spend one hit or crit result to assign the rattle condition to the defender. Now, this is interesting. I was very perplexed when I first saw it said spend, not cancel. And I think the distinction there is like when you spend a focus or a evade token, you spend it when you're modifying your dice. Cancelling usually occurs after the dice when they're being compared. I mean, there are examples of cancelling happen, happening during modification as well. But I think this makes a lot of sense. If you're spending a result, you're spending a dice during modification. And maybe that's just a cleaner way of explaining it. I think it would be good if we had a bit more clarification on it. Obviously, spending a die result is... It's a, it's a new terminology that we haven't seen before, but I think it's still pretty clear-cut. Rattled reads, when you suffer damage from a bomb, you suffer one additional critical damage. Then remove this card. And as an action, roll one attack die. On a focus or hit result, remove this card. That means there's a 5 in 8 chance of it being removed, uh, slightly better than hits or crits. Obviously, it's only a 4 in 8. And um, that's quite interesting. It's a straight-up better Sabine, I think you could argue, although Sabine can affect any ship at range 1. But that's really interesting. Crimson Leader is a bit of a loose cannon. And i got to say, um, I'm not convinced these are necessarily better or worse than Miranda or Nim, for example, but... The design space on these ships is just so interesting, and I really like that. Um, we have a bomber that cares about firing in arc, but when he does, he gives you a massive buff to your bombs. Uh, coupling this with the fact that you can now throw bombs forward, admittedly with other bombers as well, but these guys included, that's just really interesting. So uh, it, you've got to attack your opponent on one turn, Spending one result, look, you're rolling two red dice. You are technically likely to get at least one. Um, there's a 50-50 chance of a red dice rolling a hit or crit, and if you're rolling two dice, it's pretty consistently going to happen. I guess if you focus, it just makes it even more likely. And, yeah. I mean, I wonder if there's a good list that could chain together Rattle and Sabine together and just do a disgusting amount of damage on the back of bombs. Um, yeah, wow, this is going to be really cool. I'm really looking forward to seeing what these guys can do. Again, not convinced they're necessarily better or worse than Captain Nim or Miranda, but because the design space is new, so new and fresh and interesting, that to me says it's at least worth trying, and it at least will make different flavors of list, which is only a good thing for the meta, keeping everything as open as possible. All right, I've waffled on about the pilots for long enough. Let's go on to the upgrades here. Uh, on the spread, we have two Conanets. We have two copies of Advanced Optics. 
and I gotta say, this is pretty big. Now, based on the way we saw this card on the spread beforehand, which is all we saw before, I was pretty convinced that this is just a focus version of the Com Relay, which allows you to not take any more than one Evade token, but you do not lose them at the end of the turn. Same deal, you can't have more than one focus token on your ship, but you don't get rid of them at the end of your turn, and that's big. And this costs two points, which is actually a point cheaper than Com Relay. I gotta say, I expected it to be at least three points. I actually thought this could be more expensive than the Com Relay, because I think overall focus tokens are just a bit more relevant. I think it combos better with some pilot abilities. Um, Com Relay needs things like Juke to really push it over the edge and make it a powerful card. Advanced Optics just feels like a straight up good card that doesn't need combos. Retaining focus tokens is just no joke. And look, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Poe Dameron. Oh, wow, this is a combo. Poe Dameron, Advanced Optics and Intensity. What? FFG, <laughs> what? I mean, look, Poe Dameron is not shattering the meta right now, so maybe it doesn't hurt to push him a bit further. But this is a match made in heaven, this pilot with this card. Just keep that focus token. Intensity can be used to constantly get evade tokens. If you must flip it with the advanced op optics one turn, you're not gonna complain. And then you can chuck on BB-8 and auto thrusters and just have a whale of a time with Poe Dameron. Ah, uh, this, this is nuts. <laughs> this is just so good. Um, Poe Dameron's effect needs him to take focus tokens and if you always have a focus token on him, it completely opens up the pilot to take other actions, uh, focus barrel rolls, BB-8, again, giving him even more action economy. The action economy on this pilot is just incredible. And yeah, this is gonna be seriously legit. This makes me wanna buy a Heroes of the Resistance pack just so I can fly some Poe Dameron. I'm super excited to see what this does. I don't think it's gonna push him over the top in terms of he's going to be straight up better than like Imperial Aces or Kylo Ren but I think it's something to look out for and it's going to be seriously potent. We also have in the spread a copy of Seismic Charges, Thermal Detonators, and here's a new one, Deflector Plating. This gives the Resistance Bomber a sort of a quasi-scum-nim effect. It's a modification for one point, it only goes on the Resistance Bomber. When a friendly bomb detonates, you may choose to not suffer its effects. If you do, roll an attack die on a hit result, discard this card. So a three and eight chance, slightly below half, chance of losing the card when you use it but even if it only goes off once that feels pretty good um the whole thing with this ship is it can use the trajectory simulator which lets you throw bombs forward so you may fly into your own bombs indeed you might want to actually just fly into your own bombs because it straight up gives you a tactical advantage on the board sometimes flying through bombs and sometimes flying through asteroids is actually a thing you want to do because the tactical advantage or rather the lack of tactical disadvantage you gain from doing that makes a lot of sense. And making this already pretty tanky ship even tankier just makes a lot of sense. This seems like it's going to be a really aggressive bomber. Again, it's a different sort of flavor of aggressive bomber. You could make the argument that Captain Nim with Genius is already super aggressive and potentially just more powerful. But this guy has a large base. He has the rattle condition card. There's a lot of things going for this ship, which is new and interesting and offers different flavors in the game. And deflective planning just seems to play into that really well. All right, we have three copies of Trajectory Simulator. Um, that was already revealed in the initial reveal article for Wave 12. I won't go into it too much here, but basically it means if you are instructed to drop a bomb without the action header uh, behind you, you can instead throw it forward with a five straight. And that is really, really powerful. Um, now that we've had the clarification of what launch means, uh, and we know it's from the front guides. I will just briefly mention that I think this is going to be super powerful uh, both on this ship and on the Skurg Bomber, particularly with Genius. And having a look at how this interacts with Genius, I think I'm starting to understand more about what they were doing with that FAQ. And I was really down Genius because it becomes overly complicated. I still am not happy about that because of how unsticky and how uneasy the card is to read. But now that we've restrained Genius to the point where he can't be used if you bump, having a look at how this combos with Trajectory Simulator, that makes a whole lot of sense. If you could bump and then throw a bomb forward five heart after you move, yeah, I can see that. That is just straight up borderline broken. And it's something we just don't want in the game. We don't want pilots to be rewarded for flying badly. 
And I think that's part of what the whole thing with Genius was. And the fact that you could then drop a bomb directly behind you with Genius or throw it forward five four, it was just going to make it way more powerful. So that's what's going on with these cards. I can I can totally understand where the Genius nerf was coming from. If it wasn't all about uh, Scum Nim using the bump and grind tactic, it is absolutely about that and the trajectory simulator. So just heads up, guys, that's what happened there. We have also a copy of Targeting Synchronizer. And now we have another card that was spoiled in this reveal article, the Crossfire Formation. It's a title for the Resistance Bomber, cost two points. When defending, if there is at least one other friendly resistance ship at range one to two of the attacker, you may add one focus result to your role. And this is what I was talking about before, guys. We finally have something that refers directly to a sub-faction. And that, again, is new design space. And that is just good for the game overall. Resistance ships. Um, now, a more cynical person would say, oh, resistance ships aren't relevant in the meta, so they're trying to push them. I, I don't think they are like that. I think about it, hey, we now have a pool of ships that helps this kind of combination. And look, it costs two points. So I don't think this is going to be worth using unless you specifically build a resistance squad. Um, I think two points is just going to be... If, if only one of the two remaining ships, for example, is a resistance ship, and the other one's a straight-up Rebel Alliance ship, I don't think you'd want to take this. But this is really cool. The fact that this guy benefits from your other friendly ships being near your opponent makes a lot of sense. And it makes a lot of sense when we want to look at flying the resistance bomber with not just other resistance bombers, but like T-70 X-Wings. Um, if the resistance A-Wing becomes a thing, that's going to make a lot of sense because those ships could be really good brawlers. We know, for example, Poe Dameron is fantastic at positioning. Um, he's just got another massive boost in this game with advanced optics. So if you flow him alongside a resistance bomber, that, to me, makes a lot of sense. And you could get a lot of power out of this bomber and Poe Dameron. I like the whole approach they've taken there. It's new design space, it's interesting, and it also helps people make fluff compliant squads. Um, this is not something we see much. For example, uh, Cass Scarlet with her Banyari Pirates is pretty average. Um, it's an old fire spray with a bunch of Z95s. There's no synergy. There's nothing on Banyari Pirates or Cass Scarlet that says, I get a bonus when I fly with something that in the fluff actually matches with what I am. This is the first time they've gone, you know what? Resistance ships would likely fly with resistance ships. Let's give people a bonus to making a squad that actually adheres to the cannon, that adheres to the fluff. And that's really interesting, and I would love to see more of it in the future. All right, and the last thing we have on the spread here is the Ordnance Silos. Again, this has already been revealed, but I'll go through it again quickly. It's a bomb upgrade that only goes on the resistance bomber, costs two points. And you put three ordnance tokens on bombs, and you can use those tokens instead of discarding that bomb. Meaning you get to multiply the other bomb slot on this ship by four. It means you have four proton bombs for seven points. Holy moly, that's a lot of uh, firepower for seven points. I think that's going to be totally legit. Um, I can already see things like Crimson Leader uh, flying with four proton bombs. With Trajectory Simulator, you can take advanced optics to retain those focus tokens, which means there's a better chance of him getting hits on his attack dice, which which means Rattled goes through. Then you could fly him alongside Miranda with Sabine Wren and the Bomblet Generator. Oh! <laughs> I don't... Okay, again, I don't know if that's straight up just better than Miranda and Nim, but come on, guys, we've got to try this. Um, the Rebel Bombing... He's only getting better, it's exciting. And I think um, with the Genius nerf, um, which I think is just cutting off that top echelon of the types of builds, getting rid of, knocking advanced slam down a peg, it makes a lot of sense. Now we have a lot of great options. And look, Rebel Bombing is not going away because of those nerfs, it's still very potent. And this ship's going to add a lot to that. Um, what I'm taking away from this ship is I look at it and I don't fully get it, but I'm excited because of the new design space it moves into, and that is great. That is exciting, and yeah, I look forward to the release of the ship. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, like our Facebook page, and I will catch you later.